Animal Fibers Lesson Preview Wool Rearing and Breeding of Sheep Silk Life Cycle of a Silk Moth Rearing Silkworms, Sericulture Health Hazards in the Wool and Sericulture Industry In the previous class, you have learnt about some natural fibers obtained from plants and animals. Cotton and jute are plant fibers which are woven to form fabrics. Flax and hemp are other plant fibers that are used to make various products. You have also learnt that we get wool and silk fibers from animals. That is why they are called animal fibers. We shall now learn how fibers like wool and silk are obtained from animals. Wool Wool is obtained from the hair, fleece, of sheep, goat, yak, rabbit, and camel. These animals are therefore called wool-yielding animals. Wool is present in the form of a thick coat of hair on their bodies. Air is a poor conductor of heat. Air gets trapped in the spaces between the hair and this does not allow the body heat to escape. Thus, hair on the body of these animals keep them warm. This is the reason we wear woolen clothes in winter. Animal fibers are made of proteins. The hairy coat, fleece, of the sheep has two types of fibers, just as the human beings have. The coarse beard hair, and the soft fine under hair, found close to the skin. The soft fine hair provide fibers to make wool. Some breeds of sheep have only soft fine under hair. The process in which parents are especially chosen to give birth to offspring which have certain special features is called selective breeding. Through selective breeding process, parents are especially chosen to give birth to sheep which have only soft under hair. There are six important wool yielding breeds of Indian sheep, found across the country. Their names are given in Table 3.1. Table 3.1 S.No Name of the breed. Quality of wool. Place where found. 1. Lohi. Good quality wool. Rajasthan, Punjab. 2. Nali. Carpet wool. Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab. 3. Bakhrawal. Woolen shawls. Jammu and Kashmir. 4. Marwadi. Coarse wool. Gujarat 5. Patanavadi Hosiery Gujarat 6. Rampur Busher Brown Fleece Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh The wool obtained from different sheep vary in fineness, shine, length, and strength. The finest wool is the merino wool obtained from a breed of sheep belonging to Spain. Although sheep are a major source of wool, it is also obtained from the under fur of Kashmiri goat. It is soft, fine and fluffy, and woven into fine shawls called pashmina shawls. Yak wool is common in Tibet and Ladakh. The fur obtained from the body of camels is also used as wool. Lama and alpaca found in South America also yield wool. The wool which is commonly available in the market is sheep wool. Other types of wool Alpaca, llama, and camel hair yarns are spun from fleece of animals belonging to the camel family. These fibers are soft, warm and lightweight. Kashmira is a very soft, easy to dye fiber. This rare and expensive fiber is combed once a year from the bellies of Kashmir and other goat breeds which are found only in the mountains of China and Tibet. Angora is combed from the Angora rabbit. It is a very soft, fluffy and warm fiber. More hair is spun from the fleece of the Angora goat. It is very light. Angora goat is native to the hilly regions of Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Activity Mark the places on a map of India or paste small pictures on the places where the wool-yielding animals are found. Let us now see how sheep are reared. Bread and their hair is cut and processed into wool. Rearing and breeding of sheep. Sheep are herbivores which eat grass and leaves. The wool yielding sheep are given protein rich food such as mixture of corn, 
pulses, jwar, oil cakes and minerals. In winters, sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves, grains and dry fodder. Sheep have a lifespan of 10-12 years. In India, sheep are reared in the hilly areas of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim and in the plains of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan and Gujarat. Some breeds of sheep have a thick growth of hair on their body which yields good quality wool in large quantities. The sheep are selectively bred by choosing the parents of the sheep with the desired characteristics. When the reared sheep develops a thick coat of hair, they are shaved off for getting wool. Processing Fibers into Wool The different processes involved in wool production are shearing, scouring, sorting, dyeing, carding, spinning, and weaving. Step 1. Shearing the fleece along with a thin layer of skin is shaved off. This process is called shearing. Shearing is done with a manual razor in the hot weather so that the animals can survive without their protective coat. Shearing does not hurt the sheep. This is because the uppermost layer of the skin which is shaved off is dead. The hair of the sheep grows again just as our hair grows. In fact, shearing helps the sheep as they get rid of the thick woolen coat in the hot weather. Step 2. Scouring. The sheared skin along with the hair is thoroughly washed in tanks to remove dust, dirt, and grease. This process is called scouring. Scouring is nowadays done by machines. The wet hair is then dried. Step 3. Sorting. After scouring, hairs of different textures are sorted out and graded in factories. The small soft fluffy fibers called fuzz, buzz, are picked up from the hair. The remaining fibers are again scoured and dried. The wool then is ready to be drawn into fibers. Step 4. Dyeing. The natural fleece of sheep and goat is white, brown or black in color. The fibers are dyed in desired colors. Step 5. Carding. The dyed fibers are passed through metal teeth to straighten and comb them. This process is called carding. Step 6. Spinning. Fibers are then converted into thread or yarn. This process is called spinning. Step 7. Weaving. The longer fibers are made into wool for sweaters. Shorter fibers are woven into woolen cloth. The quality of wool varies from one breed of sheep to another. It is determined on the basis of thickness, length, shine, strength, and color of the fiber. Silk. We have already learnt in the previous class that silk is obtained from silkworm, therefore, it is an animal fiber. Rearing of silk moth for obtaining silk is called sericulture. Silk fibers are soft, elastic and lustrous. Silk yarn is made from thread-like filaments which a silkworm spins around itself to make a cocoon. Silk does not conduct heat and hence keeps a person warm in winters and cool in summers. Life Cycle of a Silk Moth There are four stages in the life cycle of a silk moth egg, caterpillar, larva, pupa, and adult. The female silk moth lays about 300 to 400 eggs at a time on mulberry leaves. They hatch into larvae within 3-5 days. The larvae are called caterpillars or silkworms. The caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves and grow in size after which they enter the next stage of their life cycle called pupa. The caterpillar weaves a net around its body to form a ball-like structure by swinging its head from side to side. During this movement of head, the caterpillar secretes a sticky fluid, a protein called fibroin, which hardens on exposure to air and forms silk fiber. The covering around the body of the caterpillar is called cocoon. The silkworm then turns into a pupa. It continues to develop inside the cocoon. At the end of the pupal stage, the young moth flies out cutting open the cocoon. There are different kinds of silk moths which yield different varieties of silk varying in texture and quality. They may be coarse, shiny, smooth, etc. Some of the varieties of silk are tusar, munga, kosa silk, etc. which are produced from different kinds of silk moths. The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. The silk thread obtained from its cocoon is soft and lustrous. It can be dyed in beautiful colors. Do you know that silk was actually discovered in China about 5000 years ago? Sericulture is a very old occupation in India.
about 90 percent of the silk comes from Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu. Adult eggs, caterpillar, pupa in cocoon. At times, artificial silk is sold as natural silk. Let us see how to differentiate between the two. Rearing silkworms, sericulture. The breeding and management of silkworms for the production of silk is known as sericulture. It is a complex and lengthy process. The female silk moth lays eggs which are carefully stored on strips of cloth or paper. They are sold to silkworm farmers. The eggs are kept by farmers under hygienic conditions and controlled temperature and humidity which are suitable for hatching. This is called incubation. The caterpillars come out of the shells. They are kept on bamboo trays and fed on fresh, chopped mulberry leaves. For six weeks, the caterpillars eat continuously and increase in size. Now, they are shifted to a bamboo chamber. Small branches of trees and twigs are provided in the trays in this rearing house. The caterpillars climb these branches and make their cocoons out of one continuous thread. This cocoon making process takes about 8 days. This is called spinning of the cocoon. The cocoons are collected for obtaining silk fibers. They are immersed in boiling water or exposed to sun to kill the worms. The silk filament is separated from the cocoon. The process of removing silk filament from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk. The fiber is known as raw silk. Reeling is done on special machines which unwind the thread from the cocoon. Silk fibers are then spun to get silk threads and then woven into silk cloth by weavers. Health Hazards in the Wool and Sericulture Industry Wool Sorters Disease People working in the wool industry sometimes get infected by a bacterium leading to a fatal blood disease called anthrax. Anthrax is also called wool sorters disease. Respiratory diseases, inhaling vapors arising from cocoons undergoing steaming, cooking, and reeling processes can cause breathing problems, asthma and bronchial ailments, scabies and other skin infections. The first step in reeling of silk fiber is boiling of cocoons in water to kill the worms. As a result of constant dipping in boiling water, the skin of the hands becomes raw and blistered. This results in a number of skin infections.